Alrighty, here I am. I'm in the kitchen, getting ready to make the chili. Um, it, it was gonna be made out of fresh ingredients only. Um, that didn't happen. Um, went to the grocery store the night before the blizzard and there was basically no fresh ingredients. So I'm calling it disaster chili, uh, making it out of whatever I could get at the grocery store before a disaster um, and whatever's at my house. So um, I had to get creative, but I still think I can pull it off. Okie dokie, step one of the process. Um, I'm going to uh, stew tomatoes. Let me stew tomatoes. They've already been canned, so they're kind of half stewed already. Um, but I'm going to stew them with some other spices and ingredients. Um, while I take a shower, and then I'll come back and I'll mount the meat and really get things going. So, step number one, ingredient number one, diced tomatoes. Ingredient number two, diced tomatoes with jalapenos. There was no, um, well, there was peppers at the, at the store, but I kind of forgot to pick them up. I saw them there, but I was just going to get frozen ones that were already cut because I was being lazy. Um, I mean, so there's another one. Um, so we'll put those. Can't do anything without salt. Um, I could probably use iodized salt because all the radiation um, iodine is supposed to help with radiation. All these 5G towers are probably going to give us brain cancer. Um, so, kosher salt. I'm putting about this much in. Um, I don't know. It looks about right. Um, so, kosher salt. Um, chili powder. I figure you can't make chili without chili powder. So, I just open up that hole there. I don't know. That looks good. Um, now this one, chipotle chili pepper. That is like, I believe it's smoked chili peppers. So, it gives it a little smoky flavor. So, I'll dump some of that in. That looks good. Now, this I have ground in my fancy little spice grinder. It is... Peppercorn Malang. I don't know. It's a. Uh, I don't know. The last time I got this, it was called Peppercorn Medley. I think it's like three different kinds of peppercorns. Um, it says black peppercorns, white peppercorns, allspice, pink peppercorns, green peppercorns. So that's fancy allspice. I didn't know that. It's probably why it smells so good. So, I'll just put a little of that in here. Um, I'm going to save some of that for the, for the meat when I brown it. The secret is to cooking chili. Every step of the way, it, you need to be able to eat it. You know, it needs to taste good. So, if you go one step of the way and you can't palate it by adding something else to it, it's probably not going to be good. So, when I make chili, I make sure just the tomatoes and whatever I put in the pot first to stew. Um, that I would just want to eat that with a spoon. Same thing with the meat. If the meat doesn't taste good, um, it's not going to taste good when you put it in the chili. So I always make sure everything's seasoned well and cooked well every step of the way. That way I know it's going to be good. Um, so I'm just going to turn this on like a, I call it a, I don't know, I'm going to turn it on low, let it simmer. I'm definitely not going to do it hot because I'm going to jump in the shower. I don't want to burn it. not be able to tell that it's what it should say on there. Diced. I want it to be basically, I don't know what you would call it, uh, not diced tomatoes anymore. I want it to be stewed tomatoes. So all right, that's step one. I'm going to jump in the shower and uh, come back and brown some meat. All right, he just got out of the shower and I want to check this out. Mmm. It already smells like chili and all it is is tomatoes and some seasonings. Mmm. I can smell that chipotle. 
that allspice that I didn't know I was going to put in there. So that's got a long ways to stew down. So I'm just going to leave her in there. Going to go make some phone calls, maybe send some emails. Um, and once that stews down, that bacon grease that's already coagulated or whatever you call that, not turned into oil, it's more grease now. Um, I'll just fire that back up, throw my meat in there, my seasonings, get that cooked up. I'll throw it in with the tomatoes, probably let that stew for a little bit longer, then add some tomato juice and some other seasonings, and um, then I'll have some chili. Alrighty, I did find an onion in the fridge, so that's a plus. You guys will be impressed by my knife skills. I'm not a really big fan of, uh, I don't know, this outside of the onions. I usually waste about the first two layers. It just seemed to be a little bit flaky. No, I bought that microphone, so maybe you'd get better audio, but it's still in the box in the other room. Man, this is just giving me troubles today for some reason. Probably because I just need to go for two layers like I always do. There we go. That's working better. I don't know, when I don't have an audience, it seems to go a lot easier than this. Just like anything, especially backing up a trailer. As soon as I get an audience, I can't even back it up straight. All right, so I think I'm gonna cut this thing kind of coarse. I don't have much, much for filler in that chili, so I'll just cut it kind of coarse. I'm just gonna use the whole thing, might as well. Let's see here. Whoops. I'm doing it backwards, I think. It'll be all right. Nobody will know the difference, especially since I'm the only one that's gonna eat it. to know I did it wrong there there's some big old coarse chunks maybe I'll put half of this in with the, the meat when I brown it and the other half could go in the chili when I add the meat that way it's not all browned up I think that sounds like a good plan to me boy these red onions make me cry Ah, ah. Alrighty. So onions cut up. I'll put half of that in the frying pan. I've got it going uh, with the bacon grease. Um, so we'll head back over to the stove. Alrighty, the first part of browning my venison burger is uh, adding some bacon to the bacon grease. Why not? There's like no fat in the venison, so might as well add a little bacon, and it's also nice to get a little surprise every now and then in the chili. So, let me get the goo off my hands, and I'll be right back. Alright, so I'll just get this kind of browned up a little bit. It'll obviously keep cooking when I'm browning other stuff. Um, boy, and you can tell, I don't know if you can tell from there, but my stove isn't level, so all the grease goes to this one end. Um, so, my goal is to make a YouTube video on how to level your stove. Um, obviously, I wasn't very good at it the first time, but it looks like all I gotta do is drop the front legs just a little bit. Everything will be even. All right, let's throw the onions in there, then we'll do the meat. Like I said, we'll do half the onions now, um, or approximately half in there, and then half in the chili pot later. All right. 
Alrighty, so here's what's left of my ground venison from yesterday. Um, what I didn't eat last night. Which, these are about a pound and a quarter packages. So I got about a pound of meat left. Which is alright. So I'll just dump that in there and then we'll get seasoning it. Because you can't just expect it to taste good without seasoning it. I'll tell you that. blood off my hands um, so now I'm gonna kind of karate chop it a little bit ha! Ha -ha! that way I get my seasonings all mixed in there a little better all right so first things first I'm using deer meat so of course we use the Worcestershire I like the French's it's the best I've had other brands I've had high dollar stuff and it wasn't as good as the French's whoop so we'll add some of that um, basically I use a lot of the same ingredients I'm gonna add a little soy sauce just because um, this is how I start off my venison jerky recipe like the, the marinade recipe and by golly if it's good and jerky it's gonna be good and chili I'll tell you that um, so now I hope I'm not blocking you with my nope we're good um, I hoping I didn't block you with my door, my spice cabinet. Um, we've got the kosher salt. And we'll put about that much. Can't go wrong with salt. Um, I put the peppercorns. Here's the peppercorns, all spice and stuff. We'll just put a little bit of that in there. Um, might as well add some chipotle pepper. Of course, it's chili, so we need some chili powder. Yeah, I'm not going to put too much chili powder. I'm going to put a bunch of other stuff in here. So I'm doing the shaker side of it, not the pour side of it. Um, now, I'm basically doing this like I would do my uh, taco meat. This is a secret. Cumin, cumin, uh, whatever it is. It's my favorite Mexican ingredient right here. Uh, it's what makes taco meat taste like taco meat. So, I'm not going to try to make it taste totally like tacos, but a little bit. So, chili powder, we got chipotle powder coming. We've got the uh, peppers, we got salt. Um, that's probably good. I'm going to crank up this heat and get it browning. So, I'm just going to mix it all together so half of it isn't unseasoned. I forgot I had the heat turned all the way down because I was over there cutting onions and stuff, getting the getting the oil hot. So now I gotta, gotta get her uh, heated up. It's slacking. I'm really impatient when I'm ground, browning meat. Um, I just like to do it hot and fast. There ain't no reason to do it slow. That's when heat. We're pushing it anyway to see if this gets done by lunchtime or not i don't even know what time it is 10 something i don't know um it's obviously not 4 14. um i don't know why i never said that i probably should um clock well, i don't even know what time it is so why would i be doing that now um so once i get done with the video maybe i'll change that to the way it's right Anyway, this is gonna brown up. Then we'll add it to the chili. We'll add it, add it to the stewed tomatoes and stew it for even longer. Then at the end, after everything's stewed nice and good, um, I will add some more stuff. Um, if I've got good meat and good vegetables and everything, I won't even put beans in it. Um, but I've got a lack of vegetables, uh, like you know peppers and onions and stuff. I got plenty of onion, but peppers, and I can't remember what all I put in chili when I don't have beans, or when I don't use beans. Um, I know I do a lot of peppers. Um, about any flavor of pepper you can put in there that's not like a ghost pepper or something like that, that's silly. I don't know who'd want to eat one of those. Um, I did have a, a girl one time, her dad gave me for Christmas some uh, dried ha uh, habaneros. And man, you put one little flake of that in anything and it makes it unbearable. So I stopped using it. 
All right, anyway, we'll let this brown and then we'll do the next step. I'll tell you what, this meat is smelling awesome. mixed in there so that extra flavor extra moisture to get the dry out man this is smelling good I saw some raw meat in there I'd try some right now definitely gonna try it before I uh, put it in the chili I'll probably try the chili before I put it in the chili you know I'll just try this now it'll be all right this one looks done hot that's hot I don't just eat this with a spoon. All right. Let's see, that's probably brown up enough. I'll turn that off for a second. I'm gonna try this tomato stuff before I add that to it. Yeah. See how this looks a lot like tomatoes still? I want it to not look like tomatoes. that up real quick since I'm on video there we go so what I'm gonna do now so everything kind of gets you know about the same flavor I'm gonna, gonna mix it together um, the meat and the tomato first oops, I'm gonna try one of these just to see what it is I really don't like raw tomato this is kind of cooked um, and it's got seasoning so we'll see if I like it nice and spicy um i'm gonna add some sugar to that you're supposed to add brown sugar but all i got is the regular sugar so i'll add some, some sugar to that sweeten it up a little bit maybe cancel out some of the heat and then i'll mix everything together so right here i got the smart and simple granulated sugar like i said brown sugar is a better choice from what i hear um but this is what i got or should i add maple syrup to it yeah, screw this. I'm adding maple syrup to it. I don't have done that. It's nice and sweet. Oh, best if used by November 2021. Whoops. Alright, this bottle here, $15 a bottle. You know why? Ingredients, pure maple syrup. That's it. Maple syrup. Now this is in the fridge, so it might be hard to pour. Oh, nope, sure ain't. Yeah, that's probably enough. Mm -mm, that's good. All right, we'll mix it in and give it another taste. I hope I just didn't give away my secret. I could win the chili contest if this is good. I shouldn't tell anybody how I do something until I try it. Sweet and finishes freaking spicy still. Um, it is what it is. I think it's gonna be good. So now, if I had any real top pads that aren't in this, that'd be nice. Um, I think I just, I don't know. I got an old cotton glove and a top pad, so I think that'll that'll be good. I'll just dump all this in there. I'm going to mix it all together and I'm going to let that cook down for a really, really long time. Mmm. I can almost forget the beans. This is looking good. I'll give you guys a close up.
Now, if you can tell, there's like nothing even close to burnt on this cast iron. Like it's just nice and slick. So I'll, literally all I'm gonna do is use my sprayer nozzle over there on the on the sink and then I'm gonna put it back on the heat, dry it out, squirt some oil on it, and then uh, let it cool down and it's gonna be seasoned again. All right, so here's what I normally do. Well, that was super easy to clean. I just literally rinsed it out. Um, I fold the paper towel up pretty decent. There's a secret why you wanna do it a lot. Then I just speed up the process. I wipe the water out of it. Um, I get it nice and hot. Um, secret behind that too. It's not really a secret. It's science, physics, you know, whatever. Um, I don't want to scare you away from cleaning up your cast irons if I use big uh, words like physics and things. Um, so anyway, see how that's kind of dirty still? That's just par for the course. Um, secret is, boom, I fold it like that. Got a clean spot. So then when I spray the oil on, or you can just dump some oil on, wipe it around. Maybe I'll do that. You've already seen me spray it if, you, if you've been keeping up on my videos. Um, so, I don't know if it's hot or not yet. I let it get pretty cool. It was silly of me if I, if I knew I was going to do this, which I should have known I was going to do this because I always do this. So, not a big deal. It doesn't have to be super hot. Ooh, it's pretty hot. That oil is nice and slippery. You always know that you know, your pan's hot when the oil's slippery. So I'm just going to wipe it around. You don't want to leave a lot of oil on there. Ouch! Oh, it's hot. Um, Got to be careful when you're doing this. I've splashed oil on myself, and it hurts real bad. Um, so you don't want to leave oil on it. You just want to wipe it around. Um, the physics behind it. I hope I don't scare you away with the physics. Um, cast iron is porous. Um, and when you heat it up, the pores open up, so then you put the oil in there, it soaks in the pores, and then you let it cool down, and the pores close, and that's what seasons it. So, there it is, um, I just wiped it off, I, I turned off the heat, I, I didn't, I didn't tell you that, kind of keeping it a secret, but I'll tell you now. Turned off the heat after I, um, said the oil was hot, so now it's got oil on it, and I just let it cool down, and that's seasoned. Feeling my stomach rumble. Um, decided I need to uh, speed up this process a little bit. Um, and also, as I'm speeding it up, I don't really like uh, crunchy onions in my stuff. So I'm just going to dump the rest of the onions in, let this stew just a little bit longer. Um, then I'll probably add some, some tomato juice and some beans, probably. Um, I need a little more than onions, tomato, and meat. Um, so that's what I'll do. Yeah, so I'll just let that cook just a little bit so those onions aren't totally crunchy. And then I'll add in tomato juice. Um, add in the uh, whatever beans I have. I don't know what kind of beans I have. Um, I got the kidney beans, I got the tri bean blend, um, er, ah, pinto beans, and garbanzo beans or chickpeas. Um, probably not those. Um, one deciding factor is do I have to use a can opener? So, no, I don't have to use a can opener on any of them. So, um, Probably start with the tri bean blend that seems fancy um, and then if I want more beans probably add the kidney beans I don't know um, I don't know if I want more beans uh, we'll see what happens I change my mind a lot um, so I don't know we'll see what happens when the time comes I definitely know what tomato juice I'm putting in it it's this one because that's the only one I have so I don't know, I'll wait just a little bit longer and then start putting more stuff in it.
<laughs> All right, I'm thinking it's cooked down about enough that I can actually turn this into chili. It's not, I don't know, not how I want it to be. I want it to be from scratch, but whatever. Um, I'm getting hungry, so I'm just gonna add some beans, um, add some tomato juice, maybe some seasonings, um, and then I'm gonna eat it. I think I'm going to go with the uh, kidney bean flavor. Dark red. No salt added. I like to buy everything no salt added because I can add my own salt. Um, I got some venison canned at a local place uh, last year and it was so salty it's almost not even I don't know, and I like to be in control of things, so if I say no salt added, then I can put my own salt in it. And I tell you what, this is looking pretty good without any tomato juice, but I don't know, I can add a little bit. It's nice and thick right now. Um, let me zoom you in here. Alright, here it is with no tomato juice. Um, it's nice and thick. I like that. Um, I don't know. I just feel like I should have tomato juice. But you know what I could do? Why don't I just eat some of this? Um, let them beans warm up just a little bit. And see if I need to add any tomato juice. Alrighty. Oh, I almost knocked you over. Um, I'm going to get a scoop of this. And I'm going to use my little spoon here. Got some beans, got some meat, got a got a tomato. Um, let's see if I can get a scoop of onion. Oh, almost, almost. There we go. Now I got a piece of onion on there. We we'll want it cool down just a little bit. It's awful bubbly. That means it's probably awful hot. Um, got my butter here warming up a little bit. I like to have bread and butter with my chili. actually really good chili. Um, I'm just going to add just a little bit of tomato juice. Um, it kind of sucks I don't have less. I'm going to have to find something else to cook with tomato juice soon. Um, let me figure out how to poke a hole in that. Old can opener. Like it's still a little spicy. I'm trying to tame it down a little bit. And I like to dunk my bread and butter in there. So I kind of want enough juice to dunk my bread and butter in. There we go. That'll work. Right there. Alright, here it is with the tomato juice. Um, doesn't really look much different. I added maybe, I don't know, uh, not, a, not even a quart. To it um i don't know that just looks like some good chili to me so once i let it sit here a little bit simmer a little bit uh, let my let my butter warm up a little so it spreads easy then i'm gonna make some bread and butter and have some chili for lunch all right while the chili's simmering i'll just give you a little update there's still a little bit of snow coming down you can see um can't really see the driveway. 
Uh, there's drifting happening. It's a little breezy. Not a lot, but a little bit. Um, enough to cause drifting. Um, boy, the snow just picked up a bunch as soon as I said it's not really snowing. Um, it's nowhere near as snowy as it was yesterday, but um, it's still coming down. And it's blowing around, so the back porch, there's anywhere from no snow to a foot of snow, depending on where it's drifted. Um, so I'll see you when the chili's ready. I got it nice and soft. Um, some of it I just kind of dumped on my bread. Um, trying to get to the soft side. One one side was soft, one side was hard. I just had it sitting close to the pot, and then decided the closest it got hottest, believe it or not. And you really can't go with too much butter. Like it's called bread and butter for a reason. Because there's supposed to be butter on it. So. butter, there's my bread, my fancy china, I got more fancy china here, um, this is actually two bowls, uh, this chili so hot and probably um, runny enough that one bowl might fall apart, so I'm going to stir it up nice and good, that way I get a nice variety of chili, I don't just get all all tomato juice or all meat. I could use a uh, ladle, but that would mean doing more dishes, so I'm going to use this thing. Because it's really hot. Uh, I just turned off the stove. Um, so I probably won't need this for a minute. Alright, that's plenty. Mmm. Look at that fancy meal right there. Hold on. Fancy silverware. Alright, I'll see you in the dining room. Alright, I'm back in the dining room. Where am I recording? Got my chili, it's kind of cooled off a little bit. Got my bread and butter. That's really all I do. I just eat my bread. So I had to eat it. Mmm, that's real good. Alrighty, the chili's done. Got the sniffles a little bit. That was some pretty spicy chili. Uh, not too spicy, but it was right up there. Um, so that's the end of this video. Um, I wanted to keep it pretty much just to the cooking of the chili. Um, we got some... Boy, it's like a whiteout out there now. I was hoping I'd go out there and plow sometime soon. But um, like I said, I don't want to plow it and then have to plow it again. Um, I also don't want it to be two foot deep and then have to plow it. So... I guess uh, I'll have to make a decision here soon. Um, but for now, that's it. I'll see you next time.